Design is a fundamental part of vehicle engineering. A good-looking car can send the human spirit soaring. The cars you're about to see are those that sent us soaring, specifically to the nearest bathroom so we could lose our lunch. Prepare yourselves for visual horror as we present, in chronological order, an unrivaled selection of ugly cars. 1932 Stout Scarab The Stout Scarab is believed to be the world's first minivan, possibly the world's first aluminum unibody, and definitely the world's first truly ugly car. The Scarab's oddball shape comes courtesy of a rear-mounted Ford V8, and a wide body that lacked then de rigueur running board's notable innovations, but no excuse for the scarab's ridiculous flattened face. The fact that it was named for an Egyptian dung beetle certainly didn't broaden the car's appeal, and it's no surprise to learn that only nine were ever built. 1946, Crosley CC. Crosley's miniature cars proved popular during the gas rationing of World War II, and when peace resumed, Crosley was ready with a new car called the CC. It was one of the first production cars to use a slab-sided design without running boards, and one look makes you wonder how the trend ever caught on. With its squashed visage and undersized wheels, the Crosley looked more like a toy than a car. Under the toilet seat cover hood sat a new stamped steel overhead camshaft engine, which proved to be every bit as troublesome as its container was ugly. Fortunately, Post-war prosperity meant that most Americans didn't need to buy cars that weren't as stingy as the Crosley CC, or as ugly. 1970, Marcos Mantis M70. If we had to nominate one vehicle as the ugliest car in the world, it would have to be the visual crime scene you see here. Few of Marcos Engineering's cars are particularly attractive, but the Mantis achieves a level of hideousness rarely seen on four wheels. Everything about this car is wrong, from the lumpy lines to the poor proportions to the disconcerting details. We can't even accuse the designers of being blind, because you can practically smell how ugly the Mantis is. Amazingly, Marcos managed to sell 32 of these monstrosities in a two-year period. We're pretty sure the sales contracts include the phrase, buy this car, or we send the photos to the media. 1951, Allard P2 Safari. There are a few things in life we simply cannot wrap our heads around, and the P2 Safari is one of them. Who thought it was a good idea to graft the front of a sports car onto the back of a woody wagon? British automaker Allard did, and the results are every bit as revolting as one might expect. Production estimates for this Ford-powered eyesore range between 10 and 13, some five of which are known to exist. We imagine the rest were destroyed by mobs with torches and pitchforks. 1958 Subaru 360. The Subaru 360 was built to meet strict Japanese K-car standards that limited its dimensions and engine size. We can't find anything in the regulations dictating that K-cars must be excruciating to look at, but to be fair, our Japanese is a bit rusty. Few K-cars of the late 1950s and early 1960s are lookers. But the 360 is one of the homeliest ever made, looking rather like a rare form of sea life plagued by multiple congenital deformities. When Subaru began importing the car to the U.S. in 1968, its styling unchanged. It ran commercials that called the 360 cheap and ugly. Seriously, watch for yourself. Truth in advertising is always nice to see, even if the Subaru 360 isn't. 1961 Citroën Ami 6 we expect weird designs from France, but the Ami, which means friend in French, might be a step too far. The Ami 6 was the first car to use headlights that weren't round, and we can kind of dig the wavy front-end treatment. The reverse-raked rear window certainly wasn't unique to Citroën. Mercury, Lincoln, and the Ford Anglia used it as well, but combined with the angled B-pillar, the Ami looks as if its entire greenhouse is being blown back in a stiff breeze. Even the French considered the Ami to be an enemy. In 1962, the Ami 6 was outsold 2 to 1 by the ancient 2CV on which it was based. 1965 Rambler AMC Marlin Many people dismiss the Marlin as a badly executed ripoff of the fastback Dodge Charger. The truth is that the Marlin beat the Charger to market by a year. But while the Charger got the proportions right, American Motors Marlin got them regrettably wrong. What's remarkable about the Marlin is not just that it's ugly, but that it's ugly from every angle. There is simply no viewpoint from which this car looks good, as witnessed by this photo, this photo, this photo, and this photo. See our point? Sales of the Fastback Charger were bad, but Marlin sales were even worse. P.S. Sorry for making you look at five more photos of the Marlin. 1968 Lombardi Grand Prix 
The idea that the Italians could come up with a poorly proportioned pig like the Lombardi Grand Prix still blows our minds, but it's true. This dumpy little number really does come from the same country that gave us Battista Farina, Giorgetto Giugiaro, and Gina Lollobrigida. Called the Grand Prix, we think Booby Prix is a more suitable moniker. This alleged sports car was powered by a rear-mounted 843cc, 47-horsepower Fiat engine. Abarth built a version called the Scorpione, and while the company did nothing to alleviate its dreadful looks, it did double the horsepower, enabling the car to evacuate itself from our field of vision much quicker, and for that we are thankful. 1996. Sangyong Karando Designing the ugliest cars in the world seemed to be South Korea's national pastime for much of the 1990s, though export markets were often spared the most egregious visual sins. Not so for the Sangyong Karando which escaped to Europe like a lab experiment gone wrong. From the front, this chunky off-roader resembles a Jeep Wrangler that lost a fight with a taffy puller. From the back, it looks like a geo-tracker wearing zombie contact lenses. Cheap and capable, the Jimmy Durante of off-roaders had one undeniable drawback for its owners. They had to look at it every day. 1998 Fiat Multiplay The Multiplay is one of the few award-winning cars on this list. Only the awards it has won are all of the ugliest car variety. There is so much wrong with this design that one can while away the hours finding new things to make fun of. A hood that looks like it's been sat upon, a pacer-like devotion to fishbowl glass, and an overall impression someone sawed two cars in half and stuck the top of one to the bottom of the other. The interior is no better. All of the gauges and controls are crammed on the center stack, giving the appearance of a Fisher-Price toddler activity board that's been attacked with a razor blade. The multiplay is so far out that even the French thought it was awful. It truly is one of the ugliest cars in the world. 2002 Renault Aventime It was, in some ways, a cool piece of hardware. The articulated doors were nifty. The glass roof was a glimpse into the future, and the reverse-slanted rear window would survive into other Renault models. But after selling a mere 8,000 examples over two years, Renault realized this was a bridge too far and gave up. Even in this retrospective documentary, Renault admits the Aventime was something of a disaster. Well, there you have it. The ugliest cars ever made. Which of these cars did you find interesting? Comment down below and let's discuss. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button to keep you updated on our future uploads. Until then, I'll catch you on the next one.